Welcome, welcome, Adeline and Catherine and Sharma and Mary and Betty Gosel. It is good to see you, Mitzi. Hi, and Thelma, good to see you, my friend. And Sue, hi, Sue. And I think that might be it for now. If I missed anybody, please forgive me. It's not intentional. So it was a good week off, mostly good. <laughs> uh, we're still having challenges pulling the, the sale of the Kelso property together. It's supposed to close on Monday. I don't think that's going to happen. And so, oh, goodness. But, um, yeah, so we had some little last-minute surprises, like FHA decided that instead of the contract that we had to put the roof on Kelso within 30 days with, this, with the um, funds held in escrow for payment, they decided, no, you need to put the roof on it before you close, which gave me one week to get the roof on it. And um, that was interesting because it's not easy to find a roofer in the dead of summer in their busiest time, let alone one who will drop everything and run and put your roof on, put your, put your, roof, on, your roof on. So we had a couple stressful days there, the first couple days of vacation while I was trying to work out all the, the details to get this transaction finished up. But then... Once I got all of those things done, we were able to settle down and enjoy ourselves at the coast. We actually sat at the table one night eating Thai food and watching the whales go by. It was really wonderful. There were seven of them eating out just, just off the coast where we were, and we could see the sprays coming up here and there and everywhere we could see as many as four at a time, and we know there were at least seven out there because they were, you know, coming up in different places. So that was very, very cool. We enjoyed that very much. And the Thai food was good too. So <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Thelma. I love this shirt. <laughs> it's really nice when it's hot out because the sleeves are long enough to cover heavy arms and short enough to um, still be comfortable when it's hot. So I wear this a lot when it's hot out. Okay, well, you know what I decided we needed to do today? Because we pretty much haven't met in the month of July, I decided that I'm going to continue with the quilling theme, but we're gonna quill Christmas cards today. I have four card samples ready to go and We'll talk about the basic techniques for putting them together, and then we're going to go ahead and we are going to make up four different quilled Christmas cards that I think you're really going to enjoy. Um, I want to show you the book I'm using for inspiration for this because I'm following some of their samples pretty closely because they're beautiful and highly inspirational. I was, I would carry this book in my store if I could still get it, but it's been retired for some time. I found this copy on Amazon as a used book. So I would look at eBay and Amazon if you guys want this book. It's a really good one. This is called Christmas Quilling and it's by Elizabeth Mode. Can you back up a little so you can see this honey? Or just go under my hands now. There we go. There we go. Yeah, Can't now back up a little. <laughs> okay, Christmas Quilling by Elizabeth Mode. That's what the cover looks like. And I want to show you a few of the samples that I chose to work on today. Ours won't be exactly the same because they never are. I just can't help myself. Um, I can't see it from here, Mary R. I'll have to look at it on the computer when I can see it up close. So this is one that we're going to do. 
and we're going to do one something like this, although our color scheme will be totally different. A poinsettia. And we're going to do one something like this, although ours will be different with mistletoe. And one more. We're going to do one. I wanted to do one quite similar to this one, but I couldn't find my vellum, so we're using different materials, and I think it will end up being really pretty. So those are the four sample cards we're using. Like I said, our designs will end up being different because they always are. Um, I made up a bunch of my pieces ahead of time. I'm going to use a six by six card. I'm going to use some bright red berries that I've made by coiling a quarter piece uh, bright red. You can use bright red or deep red. Um, quilling paper, eighth inch quilling paper. These come from the, um, hi, this, Glenn. hi Glenn, this paper comes from, oh, your German Shepherd in a little red wagon. I will definitely check that out when I can get in closer and see that. That's so cute. This gold tone, um, it's gold shimmer quilling paper is in um, two of the new quilling kits that will, or two of the new quilling packs that we will talk about here soon. We're, uh, we're scheduled to open uh, not this coming Monday, but the following Monday. So that's what we're shooting for, the 25th. That's always been our target date, but so far we're right on track to make it to reopen on the 25th. And these gold strips are in both the metallics kit and in the Christmas kit of quilling papers. So um, I've made up a bunch of uh, quilled leaves. I've made up two double strips. Now, do you guys remember what we talked about with the double strips? We are going to, when you make the double strips, you just take two pieces and you're going to cover one with glue and match the other one up against it and then rub it good and rub out any little bubbles and things and then let it sit for several hours, preferably overnight. So these have been preparing for us for actually a couple of days now. So they should be great to use now. To make our little leaves, we're going to use a half sheet or half piece, half strip of our quilling paper. And we're just going to go ahead and coil that up. Let's go ahead and make one of the little leaves up. Got my quilling tool here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to wrap this. And I'm using a half piece. I'm going to kind of stack that up as I take it off of my tool, and then I'm going to let it go a bit. I want it to unwind to about a half an inch. Now you can use your little block, or your little holes on the board to get your half inch piece. Or you can just do what I just did and take a little more casual approach to it. Hi, Laura. Um, take a little more casual approach to it and just let them unwind partially. And then I'm going to pinch it off on both ends to make my little leaf and oops there we go make my little leaf i want kind of want the the hole in the center can you come in on that a little bit there we go just wound it up on my tool 
let it unwind to about a half an inch, glued the end of it, right, and awesome. pinched both ends. Hi, Elise. Elsie. Oh, Elsie. Hello, Elsie. Sorry, I misread it. I apologize. Okay, so there we go. All right, so and these, of course, we know what we're doing with these, these little coils. We're just taking a quarter of a strip and just winding them tight and gluing them off. So let's go ahead and get this card going. I'm going to start by sliding my pieces out of the way here and getting my background sheet. I'll get back to that page in my book so I've got my inspiration handy. And I'm going to cover my card with gold shimmer. So were you guys all good while I was gone for two weeks? Did you all behave yourselves when we weren't watching? Let's see, I have to define good. <laughs> Bryce says you'll have to define good. <laughs> Mary just said exactly the same thing. Define good. <laughs> well, if you weren't good, did you at least have fun? <laughs> no, Debbie. <laughs> Kevin says I wasn't good. <laughs> I'm glad you missed me. <laughs> I'm sorry that it caused you sadness, but I'm glad you missed me. <laughs> so let me tell you about our construction project and what's happening there now. We have, so they finished putting the channels in the floor, which of course I had to take the floor up and jackhammer up the cement floor and <clears throat> put, put in channels and then they buried pipes in the floor that will direct any water away so that water can't get in the basement again, put in sub pumps. And so they finished that and then they cement over that. You have to let that cure. So we did that. And then I called Don, the contractor, and said, let's get the walls back up. And he happened to come in, and glad he did, because while Bryce and I knew that they were going to take some of the sheetrock off and take the insulation off the walls so they could hang plastic back there, we did not realize that they were going to take all the studs out of the walls. And so all the framing in those walls was gone too, <laughs> which was surprising and um, a little disappointing because that's going to be really expensive to put everything back. But um, so the contractors were here this week and they reframed the walls in the stock rooms and in the there were two bedrooms on the other end of the house that were done also. And I've already pre-stamped this. I used my hunky-dory stamp pads. This, um, I'm gonna cut this off at six inches and I'm gonna cut this an inch wide. I stamped two of them just because I had plenty of paper and why not <laughs> the stamping. So I'm going to cut this to six inches long and kind of cut these in half to begin with, and then I'll trim them down to be an inch like that one. So we got all the walls framed up and re-insulated <laughs> and then they came and taped and textured the end of this week. 
And we're not going to even bother to paint the stock room because those walls are completely covered with bookshelves. So until, unless and until the time comes that we decide to do something different with that room, it really doesn't make any sense to repaint it. And it allows us to get in and get working to put things away faster. So this coming Monday, yeah, no, this coming Monday, they're coming to put the floor back down. And on Wednesday, oops, well, I didn't do that quite right, but I'll deal with that. I meant to put it on the white piece and I put it on my burgundy. Um, they're coming to put the floor back in and then Tuesday, our street is closed. They're resurfacing our street. So can't have any workmen on Tuesday, but on Wednesday, we're going to double up. Don and his crew will come and put all the shelving back up and back where it belongs. And Wednesday afternoon, Brittany, Margie, Ashley, and Bryce will start unpacking all the boxes downstairs and putting things away in a manner in which we hopefully will be able to find them again. <laughs> and once we have done that, we can reopen on Monday. So right now we're tracking perfectly to finish on time. But if we miss a step anywhere, it'll slow us down. So we're still tentatively saying we'll be open a week from Monday. But doesn't it seem like this time has passed kind of fast? It does to me. It feels like it went really fast. So maybe the jackhammering. That seemed to go on forever. <laughs> Monday the 25th, Mary. Oh, really? You lived in a town called Kelso in Scotland. Isn't that fun? I didn't like the positioning I got for that. I'm going to clear over to my edge. Okay, that's really fun. <laughs> no, it's been too long, Roberta. <laughs> okay, my card's just a tad bit wider than my strip, so I'm going to trim my card a little. I don't get upset about those things. I just trim it. <laughs> okay. So we've got that on. We've got our Merry Christmas. And I started to show you what color I used. I'm not sure I did. I'm using this um, kind of wine color from our Shimmer collection. And I'm using the cherry walnut, which I thought was a pretty good match for that, for the Merry Christmas. And the Merry Christmas came from the set that a lot of you have. This is the layered layering poinsettia set and holly set. A lot of you guys have this from where we did it in stamp class. <laughs> Thank you, Kim R. When it's warm out, it feels good to have it off my neck. So I pull it back some. <laughs> Thank you, though. I appreciate that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this strip in the center here. Then we're going to put our quilling down. Oh, it was so nice to just have some time. And I got to tell you, Teddy absolutely loved vacation not only did he have our undivided attention which he craves <laughs> but he also really really enjoyed the hotel room we had all the windows in the hotel room were at a height that he could stand up on his back feet and watch out the window and he people watched for hours and hours on end. He was a happy little dog and they loved him at the hotel. 
they really liked him at the hotel. In fact, when we went to check out, they said, be sure and tell Teddy we said goodbye and we'll look forward to his next visit. <laughs> Not us, Ted. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm trying to do with this little strip here is kind of bend it a little bit. I want it to kind of arch. I want it to arch down and then kind of back up. So my vine, I should probably do both of these at the same time. Why am I not doing that? Oh, I do have pictures of him looking out the window. He also really liked the sofa sat along the wall where the window was. The back of the sofa was kind of um, right up against the window. And so he camped out there a lot so he could watch the people too. And he really, really enjoyed that. I'm telling you, he liked that a lot. Okay, I like that swirl I got now. So I'm going to put a little glue on that. And see, even I didn't get enough glue clearly in this one when I glued it. Can you guys see that that's separating a little bit? So I'm learning too. I clearly didn't get quite enough glue in this when I made this double strip because it shouldn't be coming apart. But that's what happens if you don't put enough glue in. So I'll put a little more and hopefully we can keep it together to finish our card. Come on. Is it going to let me have some glue? I hope so. Or I may be finding another glue bottle where I click here. Come on. There it is. There's my glue. A little bit extra glue in there. Ugh, too hot, Betty. Too, too hot. I do not like the heat. Okay, I think this is going to work out okay. It's my part that's a little loose is at the very end. So I'm going to put a little glue on this and glue it down. I just want the glue on the edge. Trying not to get it all over my nice curly piece. It would have been better to dip this piece in a pool of glue. I think I'm getting some. Okay. There we go. I like that. Okay. Now we're going to take our little leaves and we're going to glue them on along this strip. As I glue them on, I want to make sure I'm getting some glue across those, across those layers in my strip because I don't want them coming loose. I'm going to put a little berry across from this one. I'm going to skip up here a little bit. I think what I'll do is put the glue actually on the card. 
and I'm going to put the two one across from each other. I'm going to put one kind of laying a little sideways and the other more straight out. Stop it. Okay, and I'm going to put another little bit of glue on this side. Here, I'm going to put a little dab of glue where I'm going to put a berry and then put another leaf coming out here. Looks nice. I'll get a leaf put in here. If you're noticing that it looks like I have two shades of gold, I do. I thought it would be pretty to have both shiny gold and kind of an old gold color. So I did that. So I have two shades of gold going. Besides that, I didn't have enough of one to do it all. <laughs> well, let's tell you the truth. <laughs> I was fully prepared to come back today and share with you guys how to use the husking board. <laughs> But I forgot to take it with me on vacation. So it's pretty hard to teach you something that I don't know how to do very well yet. So more to come. More ideas to come. <laughs> I do really like these two gold shades together, though. I think they look really pretty. Isn't this looking nice? Boy, I like this. Turn that stem off. Maybe. Here's the first part. Let's put our next strip down. A husking board, Kim, is a little board with pegs in it that kind of looks like um, if you've ever worked with a, with wire and used a thingamajig. It's kind of like a thingamajig for paper. It's got little posts that go into the board. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Let's glue that. Hi, Mary. Sorry you can't stay, but I'm glad you came to say hi. We'll be back on regular time soon, and we'll be here Wednesday, Thursday, 
Saturday again before long. I think we'll just stick with Saturdays through the closure. And then we'll go back to our regular schedule when the stores open. Okay. Just gluing this down. Oops, I think I need to go a little lower though. That way. Give me a My little glue off my card there. I think that's going to be okay. I kind of got a little carried away and ran it too high. Thank you, Mary R, for reminding people to hit the like. I do appreciate that very much. Okay, now stick back down. Okay. All right, we got our vine on. Let's put our other leaves on. I think I'll go up instead of down. A nice big leaf here. Because I just kind of let these unwind a bit and went from there, some of my leaves are slightly different sizes, which I also kind of like. <laughs> I did that on purpose. I kind of liked the idea of my leaves not being totally symmetrical because few things in nature are perfect and I kind of liked the idea of them being a little different varieties, little different sizes, little different colors. Come on, don't be ornery. This one, for some reason, just doesn't want to stick there. I'll just keep getting my glue till it does. There we go. <laughs> Eventually, it had to go. It's still trying to stick up. Okay. I think this is really going to be pretty. Using the golden shimmer paper, which is almost a perfect match for these leaves. And then a kind of wine colored shimmer paper from the store. The packages I had didn't have the names on them, so we'll have to look at those when we can get in and see what the names are again. I'm going to have lots of extra leaves. I made plenty because I didn't know but what my pattern might be very different than the original. Because I tend to do that. <laughs> I know you guys do too. The further you work, the more it diverges from the original, which is a great thing. I don't mind that at all. I love that, actually. That means you're feeling confident, and that means I've done my job. So I do like that that happens. If you get to a point where your confidence is such that you're just ready to roll, that's a very good thing.
a few more berries on my lower one than I do on my upper one. That's okay, too. So there's two more tools that I want to introduce you to before we leave the topic of quilling. One of them is the husking board that Glenn just mentioned. Isn't that fun? That's very fun. I did kind of pull away from my pattern a little bit here. I actually could. And I think I will just because I kind of have, I do have a few extra leaves. I can make another one or two if I need them. I kind of got my design a little bit low. So I think I'm going to come in here and add an extra stem. Why not? I have the supplies and I can do that. So I'm going to add another piece of stem on mine. Bring it up to a leaf at the end. I sat there on the last two nights of vacation just coiling little pieces for our our projects today. I'm gonna make myself two more leaves. <laughs> this is the first Mary of our Christmas in July classes. I'm gonna have a Christmas theme to things here for a while. <laughs> well, with this old lady stuff, you tell her we're young. <laughs> old lady stuff. <laughs> oh, old lady stuff. I tell you. That sounds like something my daughter would say to me, doesn't it, honey? <laughs> Old lady stuff. <laughs> my goodness. Oh, speaking of lavender, our lavender all over Oregon is in bloom and it's so beautiful. Oh my gosh, everywhere you look, lavender, lavender, lavender. So pretty. We have a little retaining wall between us and the neighbors and we have some arborvita trees growing in there that steal all the water. So nothing ever grows very well in that area. But Bryce stuck a lavender plant in there. And I'm telling you, that has taken off. It just looks so beautiful in there. I told them we just need to plant them all along that retaining wall and take advantage of the fact that they're so hardy. They live even though the arborvita steal all the water. So we're just coiling a half strip. We're letting it unwind to about a half an inch. And then, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Now, I like that better because mine was a little low. So I like that better. That's card number one. How are we doing for time, honey? 240. Isn't that pretty? I just love that. Hi, Diane. Good to see you. 
I do love that. That's pretty. Okay, let's see number two. <laughs> Get my glue bottle and stick it in my water thing. Move these extra pieces out of the way so I'm not sticking them to the wrong card. All right. Next, we're going to make a square card. I believe this is five by five. I'm going to cover this card in this very pretty Basil Basics paper. I'll tell you what the name of it is as soon as I see it. This is kind of a polka dot pattern. It's Basil Basics Basil, and it is some name that shall remain anonymous, I guess, because you have to have better eyes than mine to read it. It just has the Basil Basics address on it. It might say on the top here. I'll see if Bryce can read it after I cut it off. Cut off the piece I want. So here we go. Next, we're going to make mistletoe. Mistletoe. A card with mistletoe. Now, who wouldn't love to get these cards at Christmas? They're just so cool and so different. <laughs> Can I send you a card from Naughty Kitty and let her imagination soar? <laughs> Glenn told Catherine, I just received your card and I can smell the lavender quite potent still. A nice addition to my underwear drawer. <laughs> okay, I love this green with a little lighter green polka dots in it. It's very subtle, but I think that's what's pretty about it, is it's very, very subtle. I'll see if Bryce can read it. I he can maybe magnify it with his phone and tell us what the name of this paper is. I don't want to take the time to do that right now. Okay. Can you see if you can read that? On one side it says base, so well, that should be where it is. Okay, I need to verify the measurements of this card, and sure enough, they are, it is five by five. So I'm going to take this piece of cardstock, which is also quite pretty. What am I trying to read? It says basil. Does it have a color name? This one is from the paper company, Color Connect, and it's elegant leaf ivory. Now, I have to tell you, I've had this paper for 10 years, so whether the paper company is still in business and whether they make this paper, I don't know, but I will tell you what it is. Okay, so I'm going to cut this square to be four and three quarters by four and three quarters. The only other thing on here that could be a color is called Thicket. Oh, Thicket. That is the name of the color. Now that you say that, I kind of remember ordering it. Thicket. Basil's the color company. Okay. I have this and that looks beautiful, but I can't see my pretty, my pretty um, green card stuck in the back. So I'm going to trim this a little bit more. I'm going to go to four and a half by four and a half so I have a little wider margin because I want to really show off that pretty green paper in back. That's much better. Much better. And go ahead and glue this down. Now I cut a 
I don't even know how big this is. Just a little round. I'm going to say if the card's five by five, that has to be maybe three and a half inch round. And I'm going to glue this down. Remember when you're gluing on Mary to smooth your glue before you put it down or it will show everywhere you glued it. So just by running your finger around it, smoothing that glue down just a bit, you shouldn't get that. So I'm going to center that. <laughs> Sharma says you think we should all send Glenn things for his undie drawer for his birthday. <laughs> Mary said her postman said, thank you to your whole card group. You're keeping us in business. <laughs> okay. Now. Oh, I've got a couple strays in here. Don't belong in here. Let's take a look at these. These green pieces for our mistletoe are made. In fact, let's just make one. Let's see if I can dark green here. I guess it doesn't matter if it's the same color green. I just want to. That's the same color, though. We're going to wrap an entire piece. I <laughs> know thongs, Clint said. <laughs> oh dear okay all right you're gonna wrap an entire piece of green <laughs> wrap up a whole piece of green I just made it, pinched it to make it all line up. Now I'm going to let this unwind to about an inch. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the end of it. And now I'm going to kind of squeeze it into a teardrop pattern. Squeeze it into a teardrop. I actually let this one get quite a bit bigger than the others. Maybe I should have gone a little smaller. I think actually I'll go ahead and remake this and make this just a little bit tighter. I'm just winding it back up a bit. Oh. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to just wind this back up a little bit again. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because I got a little carried away on the size. I'm still using full strip, by the way, but I'm not going to let it expand quite so much. Yeah, this is going to look better. And what I'm doing is... I am pinching it and pushing it around my thumb at the same time. So I get this kind of um, shaped teardrop effect. Now I'm going to connect two of these. Connect two. I'm going to put a... I've wound um, white quarter inch strips tightly and I'm going to put a white between them. I'm going to go ahead and glue these down. Then I'll add a stem to it. Do be careful not to get any extra glue on your mirror board because it really makes a mess if you don't get it cleaned off well. So try really hard not to get any extra glue on your mirror board. Like I just did, but I fixed it. 
And I'm going to put a little white dot here in the middle. And then I'm going to put another piece of green to the other side. And the real trick here on this gold is going to be to glue my stems in place. I want my stems to come up and into this area, so I'm going to tear that. And I'm going to put my stem in right here. So, be somewhat careful about getting this. glued down so that I don't get too much glue all over. <laughs> Oops. I'm just probably too lazy to find my tweezers every time I want to do something, Glenn. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so let's put another one in next to that, maybe up here. Maybe even part way off. That could actually look kind of good. Let's put the glue right on the mirror board this time. Feeling braver. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's good or not. <laughs> Bring my other petal up here. And I'm going to put a berry in the center. Shove that right up inside there. And bring the stem on over. Wow, a thousand dollars to fill his truck. <gasps> oh. He's so glad when these gas price issues are resolved. My stem right in here. Let's get another stem going here. Let's put it up here. Looks like I'm going to have enough pieces made to make a couple of these. That doesn't hurt my feelings because they're so pretty. Oops, come on. A little glue there. Back that off. Oh, it's still wet. Stop it. Maybe this is why we don't want to get glue in our mirror board because it's really a pain to wipe off. But you got to get it while it's wet because once it dries, it's. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. And once again, I put two of these stems together and let them dry well overnight. We'll pull this stem up in here and tear it off. I think I'm only going to put three stems in because I think this is going to look pretty good.
Is Mitzi still here, Mitzi? Thank you for the Christmas and July card. Mitzi and Diane, maybe, I think. I made those. Okay. We got that on. Now we're going to tie a pretty little bow. Okay, Bryce recommended this green with yellow, and I actually think that's going to be perfect for this card. So we'll hold this off to the side. I think I'll tie a let's do um, let's try a four five four. I might have to go smaller, but we'll try it. It isn't a real wide ribbon, so we'll have to see how that looks. But we'll give it a shot. I think it might look good. If you haven't taken our bow class, I will try to get a bow class on the agenda here in the near future. For those of you who have taken our bow class, it will be a good reminder. Just get your ribbon out and we'll tie a bunch of our ribbons again so that you can practice up and maybe try some you haven't tried yet. Let's see how that's going to look. Oh yeah, that's a good size bow. Probably should have pulled my stems a little closer. But if I put this over them right, it'll still be okay. I think I'll go ahead and put some whale tails in this end to give it a little bit more texture. see and Laura. Thank you for doing that. That was very kind. And I think I'm actually going to put glue on here, which is something I don't often do. You have to be careful not to put too much glue because some of these ribbons will will um, soak through. But I want to put this bow right across the top of those. I'm just going to hold it here for a second. I didn't put a greeting on this one, but it'd be really easy to use one of the greetings from the Hunky Dory pack or There we go. Uh oh, missed one. Let's give this this little mistletoe berry. There we go. There's our mistletoe. <laughs> when we hit four thousand subscribers, we will celebrate, Kim. Call everybody you know. <laughs> so there's our mistletoe. So we have our first two cards, our vines. And our mistletoe. <laughs> you guys know we know how to party. <laughs> we like to party. Okay, so I have enough mistletoe pieces here, I think, for another whole card. So I'll move these out of the way. I never know for sure how many I'm going to use, regardless of what the original does. I think I planned for five vines and only used three there, but I like the way it looks. 
Okay. Next up, let's get our let's do our snowflakes. And this is going to be very different than the original, I think. But that's good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. This was the inspiration card here. Ours is going to look very different. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to start by covering my European A6 card. This one says basil. It's the same neat dotted blue. And this one... Tahitian princesses, what this one's called. Okay. <laughs> Tahitian princess. Good night, Mary G. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. Tahitian princesses, this. Basil Basics. It's light color in the contrast. I could read this one. So I'm going to put this on here. around that. I'm going to cut myself another piece of this. That's two and a half. I think I'll make it. I'm going to start with two and a half by four and a half. In fact, I'll just start it with two and a half. I'm going to go ahead and punch it with my hunky dory punch. The widest this one will take is two and a half, so two and a half is just right. Bob's doing great. He got home from Paula's house. Uh, he, Lauren, went to meet Paula halfway. Let me cut that a little lanky. I'm going to trim off these extra little pieces. I think I have it just a little lighter than two and a half inches. Um, Paula brought him halfway home and Lauren went and met them the day before we got back. So Bob walked through the door when they got home and said, where's my dog? <laughs> but his dog was with us at the beach. <laughs> so he was a little disappointed that he beat his dog home. Okay. My European A6 card is four and an eighth by five and seven eighths. So I'm going to cut my, I'm going to use um, coconut suede paper. So I'm cutting my piece to three and seven eighths by five and five eighths to get my layer on here. And that looks good. That looks really nice. And I was going to use vellum and some little silver brands, but I didn't have them. 
I couldn't find my vellum. <laughs> so, I'm changing my design in the 11th hour. No great surprise to that I do these things. I'm going to poke a hole here in the corner for a brad to go through. Oops. Might have to do it with my scissors. And I'm going to poke another hole here. There we go. A pokey tool. I'm going to go ahead, I think, and put some glue on the opposite corners here to make sure this holds in place. And I found in my drawer, we actually have these in the store, I believe. This is the um, 50 paper fasteners pack. And this is the multicolored one. I have this beautiful blue. So I thought we'll try those. Got it up in the corner a little further than I wanted, but I can live with that. And this through again. I also, the pack also had these nice silvers. I'm going to look and see which one I like the best. I think I like the blue the best, so I'm just going to go with two of those. They didn't have a full four of them. Just going to put two blue. There we go. I think I could use a little more glue on the side here. I'll just stick that in a little bit more. It's gapping just a bit. That stuck down really nicely on the other side. Okay. I'm going to cut this off a bit. I want it this way. So I have those two stars there. I think I'm going to come up and let's make it five inches and test that. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. All right. So. I used my background paper, my coconut paper, and then I made myself a tag to match. I'm going to tie a small bow for the top of that. I think I'll do this one as a three, four. I'm using double face satin ribbon. Could use single face. It would be fine. I'm using the off-white color because I have the coconut 
which is slightly off-white in the velveteen. Okay, turn this off. I do believe I'm going to have to sharpen my scissors. Which is not a problem because I have my Fiskars scissor sharpener right here at my desk. Okay. There's our pretty bow. We'll put that at the top here. I'll go ahead and put that down so it will guide my placement of the snowflake pieces. And now it's time to build our snowflake. So I'm going to start. What I did here was I took can you come in a little bit, honey? This is also using the festive kit. I used a piece of the metallic silver and I used a quarter of a strip and I coiled that tight. And then I took the frosty white out of that same pack. I joined the piece of silver and the piece of white and coiled the whole thing. So it has a half strip of white and a quarter strip of silver. And I made the center to my snowflake using that. So I'm going to put this piece down as my starting point. Then I'm going to use... No, I'm not. Huh? Then I'm going to use I want them all to basically stay on the card. So I'm going to use this much. <laughs> I'm going to tear myself three pieces of this white to be my spokes on the snowflake. This is double pieces. When you're standing them on edge, you usually want a double piece because it will hold up better than it would if you were using a single piece on the edge. It's kind of fragile. This is not going to be fragile. And a little glue down my spoke. I'm going to come out this way and stand that up. On the end of my snowflake spoke, I've made three more of these. They're silver in the center with white wrapped around it. I'm going to put one of these on each of my spokes of my snowflake. This will be something like a Georgia O'Keeffe painting in that we're seeing part of an image and your mind just fills in the rest of the snowflake. So if this snowflake were full, it would be a five-pronged snowflake.
I'm going to put a we'll hold that. My silver wound with white on the end of that spoke. Now I'm going to use one more spoke. Is it this one? Yeah, it goes this one coming up here. And like before, I actually see that I still didn't use quite enough glue when I made my double pieces. So note, <laughs> you really want to put the glue to it when you glue these strips together. Okay, so I'm going to... We will be open a week from Monday, and we will have What's New Wednesday when we have our store open again. So that first Wednesday, we will have What's New Wednesday also, because we do have new things in. Okay. All right, and I'm going to put a piece at the end here. Then I made some little smaller pieces to go in here. I see three of them. Oh, there's four. Good. Come on, sit down there. Sit down there. And so these are made with a quarter strip. I let them unwind a bit and made small teardrops out of these white. To go in the center of my snowflake. I made four of them. Okay, now let's put some other snowflake pieces on. I'm going to put two and two of my larger snowflake pieces. Oops, I actually needed more glue there. It needs to be longer. How are we doing for time? Great. Oh, we're doing great. We'll get all four, all four cards done easy. Because we're almost done with this one. And we'll put four pieces. On this one, roughly the same distance up. They don't have to be exact, but it's nice if they're close. Okay. Two. Three. Four. Good night, Catherine. Yeah, don't miss the rest of it because we're going to do a poinsettia next and it's really pretty. And then I have just the right number of pieces for this one. I'll put one and two. One. One. One more. Two. 
This would look good with a greeting on it. There we go. There's our snowflake. So now we have a snowflake on a tag. We have mistletoe and we have a vines card. That turned out pretty. I love that. Look at this, honey, how it turned out. Our last wow. minute yep. <laughs> paper search. Because <laughs> I couldn't find a vellum, I had to completely redesign that card in the last minute. <laughs> but I like the way it turned out. It looks good. I still have a whole leftover double piece there. Okay, we got one more to go. Maybe I'll keep that too. It's about the right size for another one. Okay, and our last one, actually, do I even want the picture? Because I'm doing something totally different. I want this to the front of the cover. Okay, our last card for today is going to use this bright green. We're going to use this one again because I thought this was really pretty and it works so well. <laughs> And I didn't know where any of my Christmas pattern, I actually do know where it is. It's all under a cupboard and I couldn't get to it today. So I decided to do this, do my own thing. <laughs> okay, we're going to cover, there's the tape. Are you guys liking these Christmas cards? Are you beginning to feel festive? <laughs> I think Christmas craft again uh, should be arriving about the first week in August. I know that's a lot later than normal. We didn't want it arriving when we didn't have a place to put it yet. So it should be about two weeks, I'm going to say, roughly two weeks. We've got this nice, bright, pretty green, kind of a grassy Kelly green. And I used the same color, roughly the same color, to make the leaves of our poinsettia. I'm going to shove all these petals off while I cut this out. <laughs> Glenn says, good luck on the reopening. I hope everything won't fit on the shelves so we have another sale. <laughs> you will probably never see another sale quite like that one. We'll have some good ones, don't get me wrong. We will have good sales, but you'll probably never see another one quite like that because that was crazy. But you do what you got to do, huh? I'm going to cut this. Let's, uh, I, I think I'll go ahead and go to the four and three quarters this time because this bright green is pretty, but it's nothing great home about. There's nothing particularly special about this paper I want to show off. So I'll just cut myself a four and three quarters by four and three quarters. So I have a little green border around it. I like that a lot. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's layer up this paper. And we're going to use two green 
marquees. We're going to use some little gold coils. These are these are eighth inch spools, quarter of a a quarter of a strip, and then I have coiled them up and glued two together. So I'm going to put that those doubles in the center of my card and build out from there. Teddy, are you going to go on camera? Hi. Hi, buddy. Hi. You want to say hi? Hey, you want to say hi to everybody? Can you come here? Yes, he said, I do want to say hi, Mama. I do want to say hi, but let me move my stuff. Hi, can you sit? Teddy, Teddy, sit. <gasps> There's a good boy. Hi. Hi. How you doing? He's going to need a haircut again soon. Aren't you, Ted? Aren't you, Teddy? You get a haircut way more often than I do. Hey, don't lay down. Don't lay down. Oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Can you sit, please? Sit. Sit. Hey, can you sit down? Yes, I love you too. Can you sit down? Can you sit? Come on. Sit down. That's a good boy. Can you say hi? Um, He's got his head chopped off. There we go. Can you say hi? Talk to him, honey. So he looked at the camera. His head's Sir chopped off. Teddy. There he is. Sir Teddy. <laughs> there he is. He said, I had so much fun at the beach, guys. I got to go for miles long walks with my daddy on the beach. I got to pee on a crab. <laughs> and then um, kelp, I got to pee on kelp, and I got to bark at all the other dogs and make lots of new friends with people. And I like to look out the windows and look at the ocean. Yes, he went across to a little stream that was fresh stream, so he got a little drink out of there. He was in for a shock when he took a little drink out of the ocean, weren't you, Teddy? That wasn't good, was it, bud? Look at you just move around and show off. <laughs> oh, when Teddy walked through the door when we came in from the beach, he spotted Bob, ran right to him, jumped up on his leg and just wiggled his, he wasn't wiggling his tail, he was wiggling his whole body. My friend, my friend is back. Yes, he loves his grandpa. Okay, we got to build a card. I'd love to sit here and chat with you, but we have to build a card now. Yes. Thank you for the kisses. Okay. Go see Daddy. You want to take him? Okay. Go see Daddy. Go see Dad. Okay. Back to building a card. So we're painting these little golds in the center. So let's start with those. I think I'll put it just a little bit below center so I have room to put a bow above it. So I just, if I had half inch or um, I didn't have quarter inch paper in these, in this gold. It would have been good to use quarter inch paper instead of two eighths, but it works. You know, you do what you got to do. I'm going to put my leaves down next. Oh, I should tell you what I did to make the leaves. The leaves are two strips. Yes, the leaves and the largest poinsettia petals are two strips wound and then pinched off on both ends to make a marquee. So I put my three 
my three centers in and I'm tucking my leaves into opposite sides. Now I'm going to use some of my big poinsettia petals along here. I'm going to need at least three, maybe four of my biggest petals underneath. That's working well. Yeah, definitely I'm going to want four here, I think. So let's put another in. Oops. In each of these burgundy or deep reds, I have used two strips joined end to end and then taken them off, let them expand, and made a marquee out of them. Petals don't all have to be exactly the same size because they're really not the same size. <laughs> I have two more sizes of petals and we'll kind of intersperse those now. These medium size are made with one and a half strips, one full strip plus a half strip joined to that. Let it unwind part way pinch it off in a marquee. So I'm going to glue these on top of those. I'm going to put another whole layer of petals on top. I'm going to intersperse the mediums and the smalls. These are done, the smalls, am I doing this right? The smalls are done with one piece. So we have two, one and a half, and one. And I'm just going to kind of alternate these medium pieces and the smalls being careful to let those green leaves show a bit underneath. I think we talked before about books and I said I would try to get some. I have genuinely tried, guys. There just aren't a lot of good quilling books that are actually in production now. I have looked and looked and looked. And I think your best bet is to buy used copies off of Amazon and eBay. A caution, though. You really have to be careful on Amazon that a lot of those books are self-published and the self-published books are done all in black and white with not a lot of photos. So I think you'll be disappointed in those. So what you want to do is to uh, look at the publisher and avoid the self-published titles. That would be how I would, in fact, that is how I shop for my calling books. I never mind buying a, a used copy. I think if we can get a little more life out of things, it's a good thing. <laughs> so having this stuff end up in landfills, perfectly good products. I like buying used books. So... I'm just going in now and kind of adding a few of these little ones kind of in between. 
Oops, two. I've used all the large petals with the green on the bottom. I stacked two of the golds in the center, and then I alternated. I actually even used one big petal on the top. Um, poinsettias, as we well know, are not absolutely uniform. So I used mostly medium-sized petals and small ones, but I actually stuck, I see one more spot for a little one. Um, I actually stuck one of my big ones in the top layer, and I do like the way it looks. Kind of breaks it up. And... Yeah, but it, for the most part, I kind of alternated. I'm going to put a bow on this yet. I said it was going to drop it down so I'd have room for a bow. I really think I could put the bow almost anywhere. I could have probably had room to do another little flower here off to the side. Let's see whether or not what, what we have. Maybe we'll just go ahead and go with the one, though. I think we'll go ahead and go with the one petal or one flower and then, then just tie a pretty bow to go with it. <clears throat> I could have gone with a smaller card or I could have spaced this a little differently and and um, could have gone with a little um, with the same size card and probably put two flowers on it. I do love this poinsettia though. I think this poinsettia is really, really pretty. I can see myself making some of these from my Christmas cards because they're beautiful. What kind of questions do you guys have for me today? Any questions about anything we've talked about today? We've kind of used pretty much the same technique. We've kind of used teardrops and marquees for almost everything. But I do love the designs. They're fairly simple. They're easy to sit and tie and watch TV. That's exactly what Bryce and I did. I sat and tied these and watched television while I was putting together the materials for today's class. Oh. Hmm. I don't know where that bow wants to be. I don't want to put it on top. I don't know. I guess I could go almost anywhere. I may just put it out here. <laughs> I may just put it out here. Why not? Oops, that's not where I just said, though. I said right here. Thank you, Sharma. I'll show you the book again in case anybody wants to try and pick it up. This could look nice with a greeting added to it, actually. But here are our card samples for today. Here's our sunflower. I'll hold them up for a second in case any of you sunflower uh, poinsettia in case any of you want to snap photos here's our poinsettia here's our snowflake here's our mistletoe And here's our vines. There are some really, really other, um, pretty other designs in this book, too, guys. Sometimes using the same petals and things. This is that book again. 
It's Christmas Quilling. Great source book full of festive reading ideas. And it's by Elizabeth Mead. M E uh, no M O A D mode. Um, we did not work on most of our vacation. The, the, the part we had to work on was all related to sale of the property. So we had a couple days where I was working pretty steadily on that. But um, once we got through that, we really did get to relax some and really just enjoy ourselves. So, yeah, this is a really, really pretty, pretty, pretty book. And, um, I recommend picking up a used copy. I doubt if you'll find a new copy of it. But I do recommend picking up a used copy. I think I paid $6.39 for this one, and that was a steal in my mind because the designs in this book are really quite beautiful. All kinds of fun Christmassy ideas. So take a look at that. They are horrible. They didn't work. What's horrible, Thelma? Oh, you don't like the metallic? The metallics we have are really nice to work with. They're from um, Quilled Creations. Um, you know, you never know what you're going to get when you get the Chinese strips. That's what you'll get on Amazon. It looks like you're getting a bargain. Sometimes they're not a bargain. But the Quilled Creations strips are really good. And the Festive Pack and the Metallic Pack we have are really nice to work with. So... Um, oh, it's so nice that they have sunflowers this year. Anybody have any questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom about anything we've done today or about reopening or what's going on out here in Oregon? We will not have class on Thursday. We will have class next Saturday. And... You know, um, Saturdays, they're forward. Um, this should be the last week when we're canceling Wednesday, Thursday. After this week, we'll be back to, isn't that right? Yeah. This will be the last week we're canceling Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, <laughs> oh, FHA. Yeah, FHA loans are, oh my gosh, they're really hard to deal with. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it. Yes, unfortunately, the FHA loan for our tenant slash buyer in Kelso is not going fast. And it doesn't look as if we're going to be able to close on time on Monday. We already moved it back one week. And I don't know how our sellers in Vancouver are going to deal with us moving it again. But you do what you have to do. If we lose the house, I guess we lose the house. But we don't want to. We really love the house we're buying. And if we don't manage to get it, then there's others, I guess. So I will have to tell Lauren, who is totally invested now in the new house. So I bought a metallic pack from Debbie during the sale. Oh, can you send me an email? How much I... Yes, I will I will um, send you an, another copy of that, Roberta. I absolutely will do that when we get out of class yeah, today. Know, what, are we doing next Saturday? what are we doing next Saturday? I hope to get to husking using the husking boards. Um, but it will definitely be a quilling project next Saturday. And hopefully husking boards, there's two um, tools I still want to introduce to you. One is the husking board and the other is the border buddies. And those were not included in your kit. But um, once we do husking boards and the border buddy, I think we will have had a very, very thorough discussion of quilling techniques. And there is just so much you can do with this art form. It's just great fun. I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. I have totally loved doing the quilling, and it will, from here on out, be a major part of my crafting because 
I think the quilling is just amazing. You can do so many cool things with it. No, I'm not advertising for Jack in the Box, but they did have caffeine-free Diet Coke. Still trying to get that Coke truck to deliver my products, but nothing here. All right. So if there's no questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom for next week, we will see you not Wednesday, not Thursday, but we will see you on Saturday. And we will be open then for all of our regular classes thereafter. So next Saturday, and then we'll be back to what's new Wednesday, and then we'll be back to Thursday classes and Saturday classes. So we'll be right back on schedule after the 25th. Okay, if there's no questions or comments, I'm going to say good night. <clears throat>